So about a month ago, I put out a video about my north-ish facing solar panels. And I walked you through a full day in March as to how the panels performed from the early hours of the morning, um, around about 6 a.m., all the way through to the end of the day. And we saw that having those north facing panels really gave an extension to the generation day and added a significant amount of extra generation to our daily totals. Well, the comments were flooded with one theme, show us even more data. So instead of just looking at one day, today we're going to look at the entirety of 2024. So for those that have been here before, um, you might have noticed that the voice is a little bit raspy. Um, apologies, I'm just getting over a seasonal flu. So uh, apologies if the voice starts to break down during the course of this video. So as a reminder, this is how our solar system is set up. Now we're broken up across three different roofs. We have four 400 watt panels on our garage roof facing roughly southeast. We have 10 440 watt panels on our rear roof and that's facing roughly southwest. And we have eight 400 watt panels on the front roof, which is facing roughly north northeast. The total installed capacity is about 9.2 kilowatts. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at an entire year's worth of data from 2024. And I've broken down each month into the three different arrays so you can see how they perform. So first of all, let's start with our garage roof. This is the four 400 watt panels that sit on our garage roof. And you can see there, they follow a pretty much standard generation curve. Now you might notice there's a little dip in July. Um, we'll come back to that a little bit later. So this is our garage roof. Then when we add on the rear part of the house, you'll notice that you know there's obviously significantly more panels on the rear, so the southwest facing aspect of the roof. Um, so significantly more generation. Now, you'll notice there that the numbers seem to dip in the middle of the year. Now, we didn't have a great summer last year, but it wasn't that bad. The reason for the uh, slight tail off in May and then all of June and a little bit in July was that we actually replaced the old 200 watt panels that were on the roof with 440 watt panels. So that's why you suddenly see July and August suddenly streaking up there. But that was our generation from our rear roof. This is the generation from our front facing, our north northeast facing roof. So as you can see there, they added significantly to the totals. Now, obviously, back at the beginning of the year, um, in January, February timeframe, we don't get a lot of generation. We don't really get a lot of direct sunlight on any of the panels. So it's really just about gathering ambient light. But in January and February, they contributed roughly one third, which is one third extra that we wouldn't have had if we hadn't have bothered to put the panels on the front of the house. So when you look across the course of the year, you can see that they're adding significantly to that generation total. And again, once you get into the middle part of the year, that starts to become a serious amount of money. So just to make the chart easier to read, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, concatenate the rear facing roofs together, just so you can see the south facing versus the north facing, obviously the north facing being blue in this chart. Now you might notice again, there's that big dip in the middle there. That was when the rear roof was offline about a week of May um, and a week of July and obviously all of June, we were about four kilowatts down at that point. Um, really bad planning on my part to have people take your solar panels off your roof at the sunniest part of the year. But it is what it is. But again, you can see that significant contribution from that north northeast facing array. Now, what does it look like if we do this across the whole year? Well, they averaged out as an extra contribution of about 45% of what the south facing arrays produced. And that's consistent with just about everybody else I know who has north, northeast facing panels. Um, some people get as much as 50% extra. For me, it was about 45% extra across the, across the course of the year. Um, if we actually do that, put that into real numbers, so there was uh, 2,316 kilowatt hours, um, at export price of 15 pence, meant that they generated about 347 pounds and 40p uh, across the full year. And as I say, it was a pretty rubbish year last year, compared certainly compared to recent years. Now, you can take that number and you can say, well, what did it cost to install the panels? Um, and if I was to put scaffolding up and install the panels, then it would take a while to pay them off, probably about 10 years. 
Um, luckily, I had the scaffolding up at the time because we were putting other panels on. And uh, so it didn't cost me anything extra in scaffolding. All I had to pay for were the eight panels, which today roughly about £50 per panel. Um, obviously, you need the... Uh, installation kit to put it on the roof and obviously you need installers and, and electricians to wire it all up but i reckon that they would take somewhere in the region of about six years to pay for themselves now the way that we've paid for all of our solar upgrades is we actually take the profits from our installed system and we plow that into upgrades to the existing system so this the money that was used to install this part of the system came from our profits from our previous system and this is something that I plan to do over the next few years is just do continual rolling upgrades. Whenever we have a bit of spare money that we've made from the solar panels, we plow that back into more and more generation. So really, I would say, yes, they are cost effective. They're only really cost effective if you're installing them at the same time as some other panels. Don't just put scaffolding up just to install north facing panels. It will take a long time just to recoup the money that you will get from them. But as a, a, an extra that's added onto a system that you're already planning to install, absolutely. If you can install them on a north, northeast facing aspect, absolutely you should do that. Now, as you saw in the previous video, the north facing panels actually help us extend that generation day. So for those that are on uh, Intelligent Octopus Go, you'll know that your cheap rate electricity finishes at about 5.30 in the morning. So normally what would happen is we would charge our house batteries, we would then start to supply the house at 5.30 in the morning. By the time we get into May, those north northeast facing panels are already starting to generate. So we hardly touch our battery in that first part of the morning. In fact, we probably use maybe 1% of our batteries before there is enough excess solar to start charging the batteries again. That means we go into the day with our batteries 100% charged, we export the maximum that we can, and then in the evenings we can make a decision. Do we want to force export the batteries and then charge them up again on an intelligent go? Uh, or, as what we're doing right now, is... We're just not at force exporting the batteries. We're just topping the batteries up by 5 to 10%. And then we're just going straight into the next day. As we get into June, that generation day is going to run from about 5 to 5.30 in the morning all the way through till almost 9 p.m. at night. So that means for that part of the day, the solar panels will be providing all of the energy that the house needs. They will be filling up the batteries and they will also be exporting a large quantity of energy back to the grid, making us a bit of money on the side. Now, as you saw in the charts, during the winter, generation from north, northeast-ish facing panels is pretty minimal. In fact, it's really only ambient light. Um, you're not going to see significant numbers from it. You're certainly not going to be uh, running your house uh, purely on solar during the winter. But it all adds to the total. So it means that for every kilowatt hour that you generate from those extra panels is one less kilowatt you need to buy from the grid. So that's it. That's a full year's data. You can see that they made us about £300 in, in profit. Um, as I say, if you're planning to install solar panels and you are going to have scaffolding on your house and you have a northeast facing roof, crunch the numbers yourself, see if it makes sense for you, because for us, it was a no-brainer. Now, have you got north facing panels? Do you have a non-standard setup as, as my installer called it? Um, I'd love to hear from you. So please do hit me up in the comments. Um, I, I love to keep up with what everybody's doing. Um, I'm not claiming that I have all the answers here. So if somebody's got a great idea, I'd love to learn from you guys. If you want to keep up with everything that I'm doing, whether it be solar, batteries, heat pumps, anything to do with energy, then please do hit that like and subscribe. And if I'm lucky, I'll see you back here real soon for another video. Take care. Bye-bye.